Welcome back to another video, guys. If you guys saw the last video, we did a complete rundown of the last year of ownership of the Dark Horse. There's a ton of things I love about this car, and obviously one of them is the driving experience. So let's go ahead, set you guys up on the window. You guys will see kind of almost a POV of me driving in this. And uh, if you want to see a POV drive, I have another one of those on my channel. Go check it out. But today we're going to be going over the real driving experience of behind the wheel after owning this car for a year, kind of what I've learned, how to make the car feel better, and just overall impressions. So if you guys are ready, drop a sub, drop a comment if you guys disagree with anything that I said or maybe things I've forgot let's go ahead and hop in all right first things first let's go ahead and get a startup in track mode there we go so I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of talk through all of the main points I think of while driving this car. First things first, being the handbrake. I realized I did not mention the handbrake in the last video. So if you guys notice, this is actually on, but if I just do that, it's off. Clutch in, first gear, nice and notchy, and it helps you kind of get into gear. It pretty much pulls you forward, unless you like straight dump the clutch, then I'm sure it would probably stall. But for now, we'll go windows down so you guys can hear the exhaust a little bit more. And as we kind of drive more, I'll put the windows up so you guys aren't getting blasted by wind noise. First, as you can see, it rev matches. This thing sounds amazing. Downshift a second there, literally effortless. The car did not jiggle at all. The clutch is probably one of the best highlights of this car. The clutch and the transmission overall, that is. Nice little backfire there. And we'll get on it in second here. 4,000. As you can tell, it just hooks, man. This thing just hooks like crazy. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and roll the windows up now, but you guys heard the exhaust and just the handling. Brakes, downshift through the corner. I mean, dude, this is, this thing just grips. It's an amazing driving experience. That is the selling point of this car for me. It's just the pure experience of driving this car. It's amazing. Now, as I said, I only have 4,000 miles on this in a whole year, so I've not driven it too, too much, but the other cars I do drive, if you guys don't know, I do have a 2018 M4 competition. So a little bit faster than this, which honestly, Driving a faster car than this has made me really appreciate it a little bit more because the power to weight ratio, the way that this hooks up, everything is just perfect in this thing. It fits the car really, really well. Get a downshift and I just realized I'm not even in sport mode, which I usually always drive in sport mode. So let's go ahead and switch that over. That's honestly why around those corners, it felt like I wasn't having as much torque through them as I usually do, but that'll be fixed now. I'll go ahead and crack the windows. We're going through a little bit of a... Like, dude, you can't beat it. You can't beat the Gen 4 Coyote experience. Just being able to hear that exhaust alone makes the driving experience of this car unmatched. It's, it's unmatched in its own way though. I won't say that the car is 100% perfect because there are other cars out there that if you want specific things, you know, there might be a car better suited for your needs. But third, second, on power. Woo. The roads are cold, it pulled a little bit there. I don't know if you guys could tell, I had to correct it a little bit, but still, I, I feel very confident. I feel very confident in this car. It, it's just very confidence inspiring, which some of you might look at that as a downside because it can get you in a lot of trouble if you don't respect the car. But as we're kind of just slowing down here, I'll throw it in fourth so that you guys can hear me a little bit more over the exhaust. And that's the glory of this car. Magna Ride makes this ride insanely good. Like we're not on amazing roads. These are pretty good roads that I'm driving right now, but the bumps, like I'm sure that you guys can't hear anything because I don't. In my M4, you feel and hear all of the bangs and bumps. That one a little bit, we went over a pothole, but you know, it's overall, Daily drivability of this car is very, very, very comfy. It's very quiet in here other than the exhaust. And 
as a if you were to get this car as a daily driver which i have a video about that if you guys want to check it out it's not really what i'm talking about today but you can really daily drive this car if you wanted to other than the miles per gallon but who cares about miles per gallon when you can do this i don't think anybody oh we're about to go over some train tracks here so i'll be quiet and just listen there's no crazy bumps I'll put it in neutral so that there's no exhaust sound. That was train tracks. I just went over train tracks and I did not hear any crazy banging in here. But the notchiness of the gear selector is just impeccable and then it just springs right back into neutral. Now as we somewhat swing around this corner here. That brings me to my next point. I was gonna say steering, but you can feel a quite a bit of drift in this. Um, this thing is a ton of fun. The car gets down, man. Um, you can really send this thing around corners if you want to, like I just did. Um, I guess kind of drift around a turn. I don't really know correct terminology for what I just did, but I had fun with the car. Now, if you're buying a muscle car or a sports car that is this expensive, you gotta be able to do that. You gotta be able to have fun. Now, you could do that even better if you use a drift brake, but I personally have never used it, so we're not gonna be trying it for the first time on the road. But on the subject of steering, this thing does have some different steering modes if you want, but honestly, I drive, like I said, the car in sports mode most of the time, and unfortunately, I cannot change the actual steering mode while I'm in sports mode. So it's always in sports steering if you're in sports mode. But as we kind of go around a bend here, ooh, I just, I can't feel as much out of the car as I would like. And originally when I had this car, my opinion was different. I thought that I could feel a ton because this steering is good. It's a good steering, especially by today's standards. But um, compared to the M4, this is extremely, extremely numb. Uh, now, very important things, um, like if you're, I don't know, drifting or if you're going around those corners, sure, you can feel if the back end kind of squirrels out a little bit or those bumps that might pull you over to the side, you can feel them, but just not very much. But for some people that might honestly be a good thing, a positive that you can't really feel as much on the road, because if you do drive this car a lot, which I'm assuming most of you would, it's gonna not really beat you up while you're driving. Even in sport mode steering, you're not gonna really feel like you're death grip in the steering wheel to just keep it on the road. You're gonna be just fine. But a little curve right here. The downshifts are perfect, man. I mean, I don't know. Now that I really am paying attention to the steering, you can. You can feel it lighten up kind of as you're going over bumps. Um, if the front end is lifted, you can tell that there's not as much weight on the steering wheel. I just wish that it was a little bit more feedbacky. Here we go through a corner again. I mean, guys, <laughs> you can't not have a smile on your face while driving this car. You just, you can't. The Gen 4 Coyotes torque band, I haven't seen any dyno graphs of this actually, so I'm wondering how right I am, but it's an engine that you really can rev out if you want to, but after I'd say like 4,000 RPM, up until there, you kind of feel it build almost like a turbo car, but up until four or past four, I should say, it's very linear and it pulls right to redline. Um, other than the last 200 RPMs, because in the manual, it somewhat cuts fueling, I believe, at the last 200 RPMs. The downshifts in the driving experience of this, man, when you let off, when you let off around a corner, you can feel, you can feel a little bit in the steering, but like I keep saying, I wish it was just a little bit more. Um, you can really dial this thing in though. You know exactly where you're where you're putting it while you're driving, if that makes sense. Um, so I guess the steering's right. I don't know, man. I'm just kind of, I'm stuck on the steering. Let's move on. Back to the power band though. Like you're not gonna be scared going through curves um, because you kind of know, you know right where the power is gonna be. So you're not gonna be hit by an unexpected boost in torque or anything like that. 
It's very easy to predict and that's the point of this car is track driving. So you don't wanna be, you know, having a huge boost influx or a big, I don't know, either loss or gain of torque. You just want it to feel very, very linear and predictable. Now let's see if I can kind of slow down here and show you guys what I mean about the sub 4,000 range. Let's see. So if I, if I start getting on it a little bit, so we're below 2K now, if I get on it, I'm flooring it. 4,000. You can kind of see it builds up till that 4,4200, 4, but after that, it stays very, very linear. I'm pushed back in the seat the same amount up until the red line is perfect. And I mean, if you're track driving, you're gonna be above 4K 99% of the time, I would say. And the brakes, oh man, I've, there's nobody behind me, but yeah, that was not stopping on them. <laughs> but this thing can stop. This thing can stop. Nice old curvy road here, man. This is where this thing shines. Honestly, I've done 60 to 130 times in this car. That's not what this car is meant for, man. It's, it's fast. Trust me, it's fast. And it's 500 horsepower. But compared to the things that you can do with turbo cars, or if you threw a supercharger on this thing, it's just not going to compare to some things top end speed but anything that would be on a track really so i'd say like i've never track drove but i feel like i've watched enough videos i would say that the highest i really see people on tracks other than like perfect straightaways is like max 110 120 so up until then you're going to be just fine with this car and its power but even if i just kind of cruise around this corner it's really nice, and if I have to hit the brakes a little bit because somebody's pulling out in front of me, just downshift and I'm barely on the brakes and I'm way safe. It's honestly, after driving these cars that have big brake kits and stuff like that, you really, you really learn how important brakes are for driving. I mean, you're thinking obviously, but if you've never driven something that has like Brembo brakes or something as crazy as this, it's a massive difference. It just gives you a sense of, um, I can stop if I need to, unless it's rainy or snowy, then I don't know. Let's get a second gear pull for you guys here. Nice little chirp in the third there, as you guys could hear. This thing is a lot of fun, guys. I've pretty much covered everything that I wanna talk about. So if you guys wanna see POV drives of this, put in the comments because it's almost winter here in Ohio and I wanna crank out as many videos of the Dark Horse as you guys wanna see. So if you guys wanna see a night POV or a day POV drive, put down in the comments what you guys wanna see from this car. Um, hopefully this video was a lot of fun for you guys to watch because it was fun for me to make. If you guys enjoyed it, drop a like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.